all of the party, except for the sorcerer, runs into the nearby swamp to try and escape Resmir's wrath. The sorcerer decides to walk confidently towards Resmir, the player. I roll to seduce. You what? I said, I roll to seduce. <laughs> I, I rolled to get the Dragoosie. <laughs> hey, what's up already? It's me. Uh, wait, who am I? Ah, Jesus Christ. Anyway, how are you doing? Welcome to another d, &D... <sighs> Wait, what was it? Anyway, welcome to another video. Um, hope you're doing great. <laughs> how are you doing? Having a wonderful day today. Before jumping into the video, I don't know many things today, but I do know that if you're not subscribed to the channel, you should consider doing so now. It only takes a moment. You can end it later if you want. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it so much if you do. So thank you for that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Anon hates unrealistic sci-fi settings in his games. Over 70% of the planet is water. The sieve isn't marine themed. Who the Christ this? Interplanetary trade, and thus the world economy, is 100% marine based. What do you think that the Suez Canal thing was such a big f deal? Secret rulers of the world create a political dichotomy in every state. People who don't align with one of the two are declared outsiders. They must be One of the most prestigious jobs in the setting. Years of training and military experience are needed for you to even be considered for it. Use this participants in a massive war surrogate in the lore. Hundreds of common and uncommon tools were derived from the inventions used to make it possible. Core part of the settings infrastructure. Nations and corps experienced untold popularity from bankrolling them. The author couldn't be trying harder to create a main character class. It involves wearing a diaper. <laughs> character introduction leaves the table speechless. Be me. DM to table of 6 charisma characters and the goblin quote unquote wizard but it's an arcane trickster rogue in a semi homebrewed Eberron setting. Be not me. 6 long playing members of the table and one new player waiting for their character to be introduced. The new player had jokingly said that he wanted his character to be introduced via a magical experiment gone wrong, like an exploding airship or the like. The rest of the party had just been paid for a job by their new benefactor and they were out buying whatever they could afford from the stores of court. One player decided that they want a bag of trick. Idea that MP3. They find a shady store that has a lot of nasty looking crap and a grey bag of tricks. Merchant practically giving it away only wanting 50 gold for it. I know my players, they'd risk a curse for shenanigans. They get rushed outside with the merchant wanting them gone ASAP. The players decide to test out the bag. Reaches in for a bowl, but instead grabs a wrist, which grabs back. Confusion and shock that wove. They pulled the new player character out of the bag and they looked confused and disoriented. Turns out their lab had exploded a few days prior. Has no knowledge of how they got into a bag of tricks. Immediately get complimented on the unique character introduction by all players, especially the new player. I'm just glad that I saw the opportunity and took it. Man, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, 50 gold <laughs> for a new party member. That's uh, that's that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good offer. Anon explains why seeing visibility is useless. Once an intern came a rapping while I lay there nodding, nearly napping, napping on the Wizards of the Coast design floor. He asked why clear creatures can't be hit when you can see their features. I told him this cool lore: invisible creatures glisten lightly. As the sea, they shimmer brightly. Quoth the crawfish evermore. Anon's gonna give you up because his players let him down. A jeweled chest with a bar of solid gold. The players take the gold bar, but not the goddamn jewel encrusted chest worth even more. Slaver with a strong bodyguard selling prisoners of war. Players barely win instead of buying the prisoners of war, arming them and ganging up on the guy for an easier fight. A door labeled lift and the players literally try to lift the door upwards when it was actually an elevator. <laughs> Player doesn't realize the vampiric sword that sucks blood and absorbs it into the user is having a lethal effect on him because of excess and mismatched blood and not a curse. What was the point that you gave up <laughs> on tabletop randoms? Dude, you only got free <laughs> IRL, I suppose. Jesus Christ, dude. Player doesn't realize the vampiric sword sucks blood. How would he know this? How would anyone even begin to guess this, especially without modern medical knowledge? This evil blade I picked up and started using is pretty strong. Holy <gasps> why does everything hurt? And why am I suffering migraines, nosebleeds, fever and constant fear? Party is dungeon crawling. Come across this chest that's magically locked. Try to open it up, but fail to do so. 
throw a minor divination spell and can tell that there is at least one gem in the chest. It's not that heavy, so they pick it up and carry it with them. Get back to town and still can't open it up. Try to flog the chest with an unknown amount of treasure, but at least one gem inside to the local merchants. None of them are particularly interested in buying a chest that they can't open either, and also not thrilled to be buying the contents of a mystery box. Players are honestly confused by this attitude. Yeah, that was when I gave up. <laughs> Anon is asking the real questions. What's the best system to use for a game in the Winnie the Pooh setting? Fatal. You can adapt the annual circumference system to simulate an overstuffed bear trying to fit through rabbit's front door. And then another replied Dark Heresy and then convert to made RPG. <sighs> One of my proudest moments as a DM. Dungeon is an ancient vault created by an eccentric wizard to hold some artifact. Enemies are all artificial life forms created from magic. Four bosses each based on one of the four elements. I decide to play the water boss as super melancholy because he's the only one smart enough to realize he's not real. Serious existential sh <gasps> Party takes pity on him. They have to kill him to proceed, but decide they want him to have some sort of afterlife. Incubus convinces the boss to let him soul drain him to death and to send his essence to the abyss where it will become a demon. Rolls high enough diplomacy to convince the boss that this is how it will work. Boss agrees and is killed without a fight. Time goes by, probably a year or so in real time. The party, of course, forgets this obviously one-off thing that was never going to come up again. Party is on a ship and gets attacked by a pirate queen with her Sahagin minions and her pet sea monster. Bad rolls happen and the party is in over their heads. Incubus is struggling with the sea monster. The necromancer is in its mouth and will be fish food next turn. Hexblade is swarmed by the Sahagin. Suddenly, Tentacles burst from the water, grab the sea monster and pull it down. The party is totally freaking out. They hear a voice in their heads telling them that their plan to save the boss worked and he's here to repay them. Panic freakout turns into joy freakout. Biggest smile on my face that I've ever had in my life. Yeah, okay, the title definitely makes sense. <laughs> this was a great, this was a great example of uh, really good DMing, I think. Um, so, uh, you know, take notes, yeah, if you wanna be a DM. <laughs> Tell me you wanna play a murdered hobo bard without telling me you wanna play a murdered hobo bard. Be me, new DM running the Karnaf Roadhouse in TOD. Be not me. Party of 6 level 4 characters, two of which being a fairy artificer and an Arakokra shadow sorcerer. Party arrives at the roadhouse after following Resmir and the rest of the cult. The party stealths around and finds out the room where the cult is storing Tiamat's treasure for the time being. It's now night time, so the party gets some rest. At around midnight, half the party wakes up to mysterious sounds in the night which would be the sounds of the lizard folk taking the treasure to deliver it to Castle Niritar. Fairy Artificer thinks it would be funny to jolt the sorcerer awake with a harmless shocking rasp. I don't make him roll damage, as it's just a small prank. However, the chaotic neutral Arakokra shadow sorcerer has other plans. The sorcerer decides to throw a firebolt point blank into the artificer's face, rolls a natural 20. Huge fight breaks out, causing everyone in the roadhouse to wake up to see what in the nine hells is happening. Sorcerer decides to cast two Agonazar Scorchers on any and all witnesses to the situation, including innocent merchants. The roadhouse is now fully on fire at this point. Only the party, Resmir, half the cultists and a quarter of the merchants were able to escape the burning building. Resmir is, understandably, Pretty freaking mad at the party for burning down the building that was housing all of the gold that they were going to offer to Tiamat. The challenge rating 8 half dragon Resmir is now charging at the party, ready to rip and tear until it's done. All of the party, except for the sorcerer, runs into the nearby swamp to try and escape Resmir's wrath. The sorcerer decides to walk confidently towards Resmir. The player. I roll to seduce. You what? I said, I roll to seduce. <laughs> I, I rolled to get the Dragoosey. <laughs> okay. Face palm. I let him roll, just to see if he gets a natural 20 or something. And he rolls a natural one. Resmir stabs him through the heart faster than you can blink. Shadow Sorcerer's strength of the grave activates, letting him survive on one hit point. I wanna try again. You literally died from her and came back to life. I'm hoping she's attracted to my strength of will. I begrudgingly let him roll again. He rolls a free. And yeah, the player was rolling a new character pretty quickly after that. Also, yes, 
He made his new character a bard just to spite me. <laughs> Also, don't worry, this story happened a couple of months ago, and since then I have talked to him many times, and he now has an understanding of what is and isn't allowed at the D&D table. Today, it's just a story that me and him sort of sit back and laugh at every once in a while. That, <laughs> that's kind of the that's kind of the happy ending, right? I mean, as, as happy as it gets in <laughs> stories like this, I guess. I am in so much pain with ODS. Be party. Told of a bandit warlord that is in the nearby village asked to free the villagers that they captured. Agree, because we're looking for experience to level up before the next big fight. Scrying shows us a half dragon and what's likely his dragon father. Going after the biggest threat first against the dragon. Invisibility and magic carpet means that we get in with very few problems. Enter into a dark cave that we suspect is the lair. A good number of us have dark vision, so we're doing fine. Before we can say anything about the surroundings, the human lights a torch. The dragon obviously sees the torch light up his cave. Breath attack immediately and roll, boys. Party gets an average of 20 to 40 hit points wiped off right off the bat due to spacing. I am in so much pain. Enshu, all of us running in different directions and chugging supreme healing potions. <laughs> I just wanna, I just wanna hope that the human learned its lesson. <laughs> after that experience. And I'm not talking about the human from the game, I'm just talking about the human as in the player uh, of that character that did that. Snack Sacrifice Temple Be me, Warforged Cleric. Be not me, Elf Fighter Monk, Human Artificer, Lizard Folk Barbarian, Human Paladin, Dwarf Wizard and Human Druid. We captured the villainous warlock as a live sacrifice for a cabal of Yuantai to trade for the freedom of Lizard Folk Barbarian's people. Yuantai Anathema takes the sacrifice in the heart of his temple. Two pitmasters and an abomination come into the room and lock the doors behind them. Now that I have our common enemy, I have no further use for any of you. Betrayal.jpg Fight breaks out. The druid turns into fire elemental and reenacts Australian bushfires on the snakes. Barbarian charges the Anathema one on one. Duel of fates that MP3. Pop spirit guardians for AoE damage on more snakes coming into the room from hidden entrances. Wizard out of almost all spells from previous combats. Yontai Abomination somehow misses Wizard three times. Fighting continues for a handful of rounds. Fighting is going in our favor. Another Abomination bursts into the room, but it's filled with arrows. Nani the f- Allies from across the coastline had been secretly called in by the Artificer to fight the Warlock, and upon the Yuantai turning on us, they fought their way into the temple alongside the rebelling lizard folk. Avengers assemble that gif. Artificer gets a critical hit with his magical thunder gauntlets, punches Anathema in the throat, and blows one of his one of its throats open? Okay, it has multiple heads, I, I had to confirm that, but yeah, that's the case, okay. <laughs> Fatality. Combat ends. Lizard folk now running the temple and were hailed as heroes of the revolution on this island. Can't wait for next week's session. Alright, on that note, that's gonna be it for today's video, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon as well as you on YouTube. I appreciate that a lot, so thank you so much for that. Links below if you wanna check those out as well as links to the social media, Discord server, or update, if anything else. And uh, yeah, that's it, thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time, have a great day, bye!